I've got this recovery tool, and if I move it to the right, it's going to help correct some of that. Now, if I go all the way to 100% and go up, you'll see it's much better before uh, or after than it was before, but it's not a snap your finger genie tool that's gonna fix everything right away. But you notice the waves are fixed, and it uses algorithms to fix that. But what I've also noticed too, that if I do too much of recovery, um, I may not notice it in this photo specifically, but if I do it too much, um, I notice the degradation in the photo quality um, once it's zoomed in. So this may not be a perfect one to show uh, a loss of detail, but this does look much better than it did in the before state. Now, the other great thing I want to show you too is that now we've edited a um, edited an underexposed, a decently exposed, and an overexposed. I'm going to go back to the one that looks the best so far, and that's the one that's decently exposed. Now, that was important to keep the settings right. Um, F8, 50th of a second. So you can see it let less light in because it let light come in about half as fast. So um, the overexposed picture had technically about three times as much light. So the one thing we want to do too is we can do vignetting. And uh, rather than do it the way in the Photoshop, this is a great tool to use. Now in the Photoshop version, you have all these different methods and this is very easy and straightforward. I can drag it to the right for white, I can drag it to the left for black, much more easy to use. We also have the ability to change the midpoint where it's actually focusing on how round it is uh, and feathering of it. So it can be completely circle, which is ridiculous, or very feathered. And just for sake of showing this tool, I'm going to leave these at zero. And oh, well, I actually want to go to 50. So now typically a good lens with good glass lets the maximum amount of light through the lens to hit the flat surface of the camera to record an image. Now, if you see a cheap camera or cheap SLR with one of these what we call kit lenses, the ones that come with our cameras that we do not use, what you typically see is a slight vignette effect in the corners and it may be ever so slight like this. What that actually is, is the lens is not letting as much light through the uh, lens um, as it should here as it does here. So this is letting less light in and that's why it's darker and that's why this is brighter. So it's actually a lesser quality lens. So when you see a lens that you go, wow, this is a 100 millimeter to 300 millimeter zoom and it's $200 and this one only does this much and it's 900. And that's really the quality of glass in a couple different aspects, but um, a very important aspect would be how much light it lets through. So what we use we have vignetting for is to draw attention to the eye of the viewer. So when we add a slight vignette like this, we're drawing more attention to the bridge and the water. And if you notice the before and after, it's a nice image. If you add just a slight vignette, it really draws the eye in. And I'm going to go ahead and just show you the after full screen. And that's much more delightful to look at than the before. And I don't know if I can do the before just... No, can't do before full screen. Actually, yeah, I can. So this is after. And that's before. Huge difference. So just want to kind of go through that with you, kind of show you um, some great features with uh, Lightroom. You'll see, even though I did the vignetting, I got a slight um, underexposure. And I can always fix that by either going back up and either playing with my blacks of hair or probably my midtones or the fill light would have done the same thing. So 